Hi everyone, welcome to episode 5. So uh, our task today is to create a little spawn system. So to begin with, let's create a new c -sharp script which I'm going to call spawner. And uh, I want to create an empty game object, which I'll also call my spawner. Um, and for no reason in particular, I'm going to make sure that that's placed at the center of the scene. And I'm just going to drag the spawn script onto there and open it up. So, let's see. Um, our spawning is going to happen in waves, so we want to be able to uh, sort of set uh, information about each wave, like how many enemies are in a wave and uh, the spawn rate of each wave. So let's create a little class to uh, store information about a wave. We can, uh, we can call it wave. And uh, in there we'll have, as I mentioned, public int, uh, maybe enemy count, uh, public float time between spawns, and uh, later on we'll probably have like uh, stuff to determine the enemy's speed for each wave so that we can make them get uh, sort of progressively faster, uh, all that stuff. But for now, let's just keep it simple. Um, then we can have a public array of waves, um, so we can call that waves. Now, uh, in order for this to show up in the inspector, uh, you can see at the moment, nothing's happening. Uh, we need to add the, uh, what am I doing? Add the system.serializable thingy to this. And as soon as we do that, you can see that it pops up in the inspector. We can say, um, maybe make two waves for now. And I'll set the enemy count for the first one to five. For the next one, maybe it can be 10. Time between spawns, maybe one second and uh, three quarters of a second. Okay, uh, we also want a reference to our enemy so that we can spawn it into the game. So let's create public enemy enemy. And uh, let's quickly go ahead and assign that. Uh, we'll want to make a prefab out of our enemy. So let's drag him into the prefabs folder and we can delete it from our hierarchy. Okay, so on the spawner, we'll now drag in enemy down there. Okay, so let's create void update. And uh, in here, we want to basically, on a timer, spawn however many enemies are in our current wave. So we're going to need to uh, keep track of how many enemies there are remaining to spawn. So let's create an int uh, enemies remaining to spawn and uh, maybe a float for the next spawn time. And uh, we might also, just for convenience, have a reference to our current wave and maybe an integer for our current wave number. All right, so let's, let's make a method um, called next wave, which will sort of commence the next wave and in here, we can start off by saying the current wave number increases. So the first uh, wave number will be one. Uh, and then we can say that our current wave is equal to, and we'll take from the waves array, our current wave number minus one. And let's see, we'll also want to set the enemies remaining to spawn equal to our current wave dot enemy count. All right, and uh, just to sort of get things started in the start method, we can uh, call next wave to begin wave one. Okay, so now in the update method, uh, what we we'll want to do is we we'll want to say that if the number of enemies remaining to spawn is greater than zero, and the current time is greater than the next spawn time, then, uh, first of all, we want to say, okay, we're going to spawn one enemy, so the amount left to spawn uh, decreases by one, and we can set our next spawn time equal to the current time uh, plus the, the um, current wave's time between spawns uh, variable, then we want to actually spawn the enemy, so we can say enemy, let's call it the spawned enemy, is equal to instantiate, we'll instantiate our enemy prefab, 
And uh, for now, let's just put them dead center in the map. Um, vector 3.0 with no particular rotation, so quaternion.identity. And we must just say that this is as enemy. Okay, so this should be working. Um, let's see if it really is. Uh, press play. And yeah, they seem to be being spawned with about uh, about a second in between them. And I wasn't counting, but that, that seemed to be about five. So I'm going to assume that everything is working as it's meant to. Um, what we need to worry about now is uh, we want the next wave to start uh, when all the enemies have been uh, killed. So we need some way of detecting the enemy's death. All right, so in the enemy class, uh, we, well, rather not in the enemy class, but in the living entity class, which the enemy extends, we've got this protected void die. Now, um, it, it's a bit clumsy for the enemy or the living entity to have to concern itself with the spawner. We don't, we don't want on death to be uh, sort of finding the spawner in here and, and telling it that it's died. Uh, rather, we want to have what's called an event, and the spawner can just subscribe to that event and be notified uh, when the enemy dies. So let's do that. Up here, we can create a uh, public event, and then we can say uh, system dot action, which is just a delegate method, uh, which is void and takes no parameters. So it's exactly what we want. Um, we can call this on death. All right. So now, when uh, when the die method is called, before we actually destroy the object, we can say that if this uh, this on death um, event is not equal to null, then we can call it by saying on death, just like a normal method. And uh, what we'll do now is in our spawner. Um, each time we spawn an enemy, let's let's first of all create a method here void on enemy death. Each time we spawn an enemy, we'll say spawned enemy dot uh, on death, and we'll add our on death on enemy death method to that. So when when the enemy dies, on death will be called and we'll be notified via this on enemy death method. So just to test this is working over here, let's, uh, let's just print out. Um, let's just say enemy died. Okay. Let's open up our console and test it out. So as you can see, enemy died is uh, being printed out in the console, which means our little event system is working. Um, let us create an int enemies remaining alive. So uh, when we start the next wave, we can set the enemies remaining alive equal to the number remaining to be spawned. And uh, each time an enemy dies, we just say that the enemies remaining alive gets decremented by one. Okay, so now we can say that if the enemies remaining alive is equal to zero, so there are none of them left alive, um, then we can start our next wave. Uh, of course, we have to be careful. Uh, there are only so many waves in our wave array. At the moment, we've defined two in the inspector. So uh, we want to make sure that we don't get an out of uh, index exception. Uh, so before we, um, we set our current wave, Let's make sure that the current wave number, minus one, of course, since array started zero, is less than the, uh, the length of our wave's array. So if it is, then we can safely get uh, to the next wave. So let's, uh, let's see if this is working. Um, I'm going to print out over here, print uh, wave plus the current wave number. Uh, 
So after we shoot five of them, um, ah, I can't get that guy. Okay, so wave two has started, and you can see they are spawning uh, more quickly, and there there are more of them as we defined in the uh, in the spawner wave array uh, over here. So. For the time being, that is about all the functionality we're going to need from our spawner system. Um, next episode, we're going to implement the enemy attacks. So uh, yeah, that should be fun. Um, until then, thanks for watching and cheers.